Hey, how's it going? Uh, I'd like to get this lecture started by going over what we'll be covering today. And we're going to be looking at Livewire in action. So I want to talk a little bit about Ajax and what that looks like and how we can inspect that in the browser. Uh, remember, Ajax is the um, ability to make requests to the server and get responses without a full page reload. Um, then we're going to go ahead and build out some items here using Livewire. We want to get a listing of friends. We want to be able to search our friends and then we want to be able to sort our friends by different columns. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and get going. One thing I wanted to point out is in this live view playground, if I inspect the network here, one thing I want to point out is as I'm interacting with live view, it's making a uh, Ajax calls. So if I hit the plus, Notice there was a call to the server. Hit the minus, there's another call. Hit plus twice. And if I inspect each of those requests, I can click on one and it's making a call to the playground. And the response is HTML and these different messages, all right? And so whether you know it or not, when you're interacting with Livewire, it's making these Ajax calls, these requests to the server, and it's keeping track of, you know, increment, you know, what method's being called? Well, it's called increment. Any params on that? Nope. Uh, count is, uh, it was three. And then the response, right, is this new DOM element, which basically gives us, you know, our, our buttons and our new value right here, which is four. And I don't know if I can look at it. Oh, that's the response payload. Yeah. I mean, this is actually what's coming back, but sometimes it's hard to read, but it is keeping track of the data that we're using on this page and when it come, when you get the data back from the server, that's what's displayed up on the, on the, um, on the page. So it's just kind of a cool thing to think about as this is happening. And even on this one where we are keeping track of, of a message, right? So let's look at all the requests here being made a message. And so if I look at the last one, just as an example, I can look at the request and see, you know, it's, it, it has the message it's keeping track of, the response, right, is everything on this page. And so here's a message here. So it's, it's basically um, taking the HTML, updating it on the server, and then sending it back to us to be displayed. And that's happening all over, a, um, over Ajax. And so, um, one thing to keep in mind if you inspect this in your browser is that um, Ajax requests are typically labeled XHR and see that right here. I could do all requests. I can do uh, just HTML, CSS, JavaScript, um, XHR. So just something to keep in mind if you are wanting to inspect the, the traffic happening over Ajax that Livewire does, so. Cool, just wanna make that ob observation with you uh, about that. Um, the next thing I wanna do is, is I want to start building out a listing of friends using Livewire. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna generate a friends, uh, friends component, Livewire component. And so I switch over to my terminal and uh, generate that. So remember last time we saw how to generate a component and we use the uh, artisan command. Uh, make Livewire friends. 
So remember friends part, that's, that's just a string, any meaningful string that uh, will work within the context of your application. But the key generator part is PHP artisan make colon live wire. And so I'm going to call my component friends and kick that off. And so we have now a class, basically a backing class, which helps us interact with our view, which is generated there. So let's go take a quick look at those again. And uh, so we have live wire friends. So we have this empty class. And then we also have down here live wire here. And then I'll go ahead and split that so that we can see both at the same time. Um, what else here? Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much our empty, empty template for now. I think what I want to do is set up a route for this so that we can view it in the browser. So I'm going to go ahead and set up a live route here. And I'm going to actually have it come right off the root. So I'm going to basically not use the default welcome Laravel screen anymore. I'll use this. So I'll route the, the root level uh, URL to, over to my friends component, and then we'll test that out real quick. Hello from live wire friends. Let's see if that works. So I should be able to go to the root level of my application. And there it is. Hello live wire from friends. Um, now, I also want you to notice we're using the default layout that Livewire references, which is the app.blade.php. And, uh, and I get this live view playground because that's what I have in the layout. So I'm not so interested in that right now. So let me make that a little bit more flexible. And I can do that by... Uh, Let's see, where is, where is app dot? There it is down here. I want to make this a little bit more flexible. Um, and so same idea here. We have this yield content. So any, any um, views, view templates that use this as its layout, the content gets stuck right there at that line. So I can use the same idea for like a title. And so I'm going to, I'm going to do that here make it a little bit more flexible. And then I'll also use that up here so it's not hard coded. Like that. And that way I can go into um, like friends and, and then I should be able to do, uh, let me remember that what the syntax looks like. Oops, not that. Uh, any one of these actually. Um, oh, at section. That's right. So I can I can set up an at section. And remember, we're using title and the section, and then I'm gonna call this friends like that. And, oh, I should probably update the playground too, just to, so it can leverage that as well. Playground. Okay, cool. So that should basically take this title information and inject it up into the layout of app. So let's go verify that. Cool, so I have my friends and then friends, and then if I go to playground, that injects live playground up into this H1 and also the title of the page, so. Awesome, that works. So that allows us to leverage that same layout. Uh, friends, yep. We'll be hanging out here for a while. I don't need index and I don't need app. This should 
give us everything we need because we have the CSS, we have live wire styles, we have live wire scripts. We should be able to leverage all of that. So this is great. Cool. So let's let's work on that listing then. All right. And so right now we have basically nothing going on in here. And so what I want to do is just like in my controllers. So for, for example, the the idea is in our control, like the index that was responsible. And I might as well just get it get it open because it might be good to reference it. So right here in our in our uh, index, we have this action and the view is responsible for displaying um, index. Yep. So remember this is responsible for laying out and displaying the friend. So I want basically want to simulate part of that in my live wire component. And so remember, so we look up friends and then we pass it along to the view. So we just need to basically do that over in our live wire. So I'm going to look it up here. I'm going to go friends equals app friend all for now. And then we're going to pass that along here to the view. Like that. And then in our view, I basically want to create that table look. So I'm going to copy some of what we did over here. I'm going to grab this. And copy that. And we don't need any of this action stuff yet, or for now. Cool. So this will iterate over the friends. So we've identified our variable friends. So in the view, we're going to use friends as friend and then iterate over that one at a time. Each row will, will print out the information. Okay, cool. So let's go back to our page here, hit refresh. Bam, that worked. Awesome. <laughs> cool. So I just loaded that uh, via Livewire. So that's great. Um, so the next thing we want to do is one, we want to be able to search our friends. So let's go ahead and get that going. And so the way we're going to do that is we're going to set up very similar to the two way data binding message input box that I showed in the playground. We're going to leverage that, that concept and you'll recognize quite a few things from that. Uh, let me go ahead and stick the search right here and put, we're going to wire up a model so that it tracks the, the value going. We're going to call it search. And I'll just stick a placeholder on there. And size equals 50. Save that. So if I go back here, probably will see the page blow up. Oh, it didn't blow up. <laughs> okay. Um, what if I type in it? Is it going to blow up? Yeah, it blows up. So I was trying to get to blow up somewhere because what I want to do is have it kind of lead and direct me. So it says unable to set component data, public property search not found on component friends. Well, that's actually a really meaningful message because we've, we've created this two-way data binded input field in the view, but we don't have a corresponding attribute on the back end to, for it to keep track of. So that's what I want to do next. Oops. 
and I'm going all over the okay good so so we need something to keep track of it on this side right and so we need to set up a, a variable I'll call it or it has to match so search and then uh, while I'm here let me pull up playground Remember, we're basically doing what we did with the message over here. So we have a message and then we have this updates query string, which updates our query string so that it can preserve a URL that can be copied and pasted. And then we also repopulate the message. If, it, if someone ever copied the URL and pasted it into a different browser or browser tab, we want to be able to receive that data and populate our local data component data with that. So I'm going to grab this and just basically straight up use it. And that was, oh, was that inside? Uh, oh yeah, that was here. Except we're using the search. And okay, that looks good. And then we had this mount function that's built into Livewire. Okay, so now we have a variable we can data bind to, we can update the query string, and then we can repopulate the search value. We can repopulate that from the query string if it was copied and pasted. Let's just see if that works. Refresh. Um, hello. Uh, I am searching. Cool. That looks good. So it's updating. It's data binding. It's updating query string. Sweet. That's looking good. If I delete it all, it removes it from the query string. Okay. Perfect. So that's that's basically what we demoed in the message in the in the playground. So we got to incorporate over here. But now we want to leverage this string to actually search our friends. So in order to do that, we just need to update our query down here. And so um, I'm not sure if you've had time to look around at the Laravel Eloquent documentation, but there's some pretty cool queries that you can do. And so we want to take advantage of those queries and I'll show you one of them here. And so here, on the friend, we want to do a where clause and we want to look for first name that is like, and then we want to basically do a wildcard search. Make sure everything looks good. A wildcard search. Let me make this a little bigger. Where first name is like, and what like, like I said, like will basically look at a field, and these uh, percentage characters around the string. Remember, the search is our model. It's whatever they're typing into that text box. We're basically concatenating this string. Okay. In fact, I should be able to, yeah, let me, I should be able to clean this up with uh, interpolation. So I'm gonna do that. I don't think I need that. I'm going to try that. If it doesn't work, I'll, I'll go back and revert back the other way. But we want to do that. But we also want to uh, allow them to search last name too. So I'm going to add another or where and do the same thing with last name. Search and then bam. So 
So the idea here is basically we want to search our database for first name that has the search value anywhere in its name and the search value or or where the search value was anywhere in the last name. And so that will do that search, assign it to the friends variable, and we'll pass that friends variable on. The cool thing is that in Livewire, this happens in real time. So it'll do the search and update our list at, while we're typing. So that's the whole kind of point of these interactive real applications that if you did this in a traditional request response style, the page would be refreshing over and over. And that's just, that's just not acceptable for a user interface. So we would want something like this to have a real time search like this. So what I need to do now, now that we're doing this where clause searching is I need to actually fetch the friends. And so in order to do that, I'm going to off of this, just call get, and that will actually go ahead and retrieve the friends for me. So let's, let's pull that up. Okay. Yeah, that looks good. And so now let's test this out to see if this works. So I can see like Hank is on here. Let's type in Hank. Awesome. And also notice it finds Hank with a sub string of first or last name. What else? Love on a couple of ons there. Manuel. Cool. Bach. So it looks like it's working. And if I look at, if I inspect and look at the Ajax requests, right? So I can look up uh, core win. You can see the the response is being sent and, or the request being sent and the response is being returned, we should get all the HTML for the listing on this page. So cool. Okay. So it looks like our search is working. What about our URL? So I can copy that, open a new tab, paste it. And our search is preserved there too. So it's really, really powerful. Okay. All right. So that's look, that looks like it's working great. Um, the last thing I want to do now is actually sort the friends and we want to be able to sort these in ascending or descending order based off the column. So we have first name, last name, and age. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to set up some ascending and descending links for each of these. Uh, there's like dozens of ways people do this type of sorting, uh, but I want to, this is just how I'm going to do it for this. And it's pretty clean. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to take advantage of, of enti these HTML entities that are just built into um, your browser, it's just built in, right? And so if I go to any, if you just look it up, I'm going to use the up arrow and the down arrow to visualize like ascending and descending. And so we can use this and U A R R and and D A R R to represent in the browser. And those are just web browser compliant. They just work. So it's kind of a quick and easy way to use some of that kind of stuff instead of uh, grabbing images or something. So, so I'm gonna take advantage of that. So the way I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my view over here and we're gonna be doing that up here. I'm going to set up some links and these links aren't gonna go anywhere. So I'm just gonna put a uh, pound sign in there and then we will set up a, a click here but I just want to get this looking a certain way and let's see what was this we'll put the up arrow symbol there and then the 
down symbol there. Oops. And let me show you what that looks like. So we have these up and down arrows, which don't do anything right now, but we will do that for each. And then we'll wire them up to actually uh, sort the data. Oops. So let me go stick that. So bear with me while I do this. So now we have up and down arrows next to each. And so the next thing we need to do is just wire them up. And so why don't I go ahead and program to the interface that doesn't, that, you know, to the methods that don't exist yet. So I'll show you what I'm thinking to get these to work. So what I want to do is I want to do a wire click. Remember that sets up LiveWire says, okay, I'm going to, Watch out for a click on this, and then whatever you, uh, whatever you, uh, when you do click on it, I'm going to call a corresponding function over in the component class. And so what I what I was thinking of doing is I'm going to set up a click, and then when clicked on, I'm going to call a, a function or a method called do sort, and then I just want to pass in the values the field that I want to sort and the direction I want to sort it. So I'll do the same thing down here, except this is in descending order. See what I mean? So it's just kind of, it's a little bit more of a literal uh, hard coded value for each link, which I think makes it understandable coming back to read it later. So now this is for last name, and this will be ascending. This will be last name descending. And we'll do the same thing here. This will be for age. Ascending. Age descending. All right, so let me make sure I got this right. First name ascending, first name descending, last name ascending, last name descending, age. So I think that looks good. I'm gonna save that. And again, let me see if I can refresh. And if I click on one of these, let's see what happens. Okay, that's the error I was expecting. It says unable to call component method. Public method is called do sort is not found in the component. So again, what that means is that it's not defined or there's a typo going on. So in our in our circumstance, um, it's a type or <laughs> not a typo. It's a it's a missing uh, method. But just so you're aware that if you see that type of message. Uh, that's that's what's going on. So we need to go back over to our com uh, c class and write that method. And so what I need to do is come back over here and create a public function to sort. It's going to take the field or the attribute or the property, although I call it field, and the direction we're sorting, right? And I'm going to keep track of those in a class property. And for each one, I'm going, yeah, I might as well just define those now. Public sort by. 
and public direction. And when those, when do sort is called, basically want to keep track of those. Let's see, I'll do, uh, let's see, sort by, we're going to sort by a particular field. And then the direction will equal the direction. So ascending or descending. <clears throat> so we'll, we'll keep track of those. Uh, in fact, I guess when the page loads, maybe I will set some defaults here. So default, let's sort by first name in ascending order. So those will be the defaults when the page first loads. So now what we have to do is update our query to do an order by. And so the way we do that down here is I'm going to actually, I wonder if I can do it right on, right on here. I'm just going to do an order by right there. And order by takes two parameters. It wants to know the field. So sort by, we're going to reference the field to order by, and then it wants to know which, which direction, ascending or descending, right? So we're just going to uh, put uh, this direction there. So we just tacked on, did our order by, and that should update the query, and then we still just get the friends and display them for them from there. Okay, let's see what that does. Notice it did sort by first name by default, if you, if you saw that. Um, and then if I click on descending first name, okay, sort by undefined, sort by variable, let's make sure we're using that correctly. Oh yeah, I am not using that correctly. So I have a typo here. That should just not be a dollar sign there. Let's go try it again. De descending first name, that worked. Ascending last name, that worked. Descending last name, that worked. Ascending age and descending age. Boom. Awesome. I think it's also cool if I, let's go descending first name and then filter. Then, um, you know, it keeps track of in, in descending order, it filters and displays them for me. So I thought that was kind of cool. Um, but wouldn't it be nice Let's do that again. Wouldn't it be nice if I was, if I were sorted and searching, it'd be nice to keep that, keep track of that in the URL as well so that I can copy this URL and paste it somewhere else and have the order and the filtering preserved. So remember how we do that. We use that uh, query strings variable. And so let's go ahead and do that. Put some, nice finishing touches on this. Um, so I'm going to add these to the query string parameters here. So sort by and direction, which, so that'll keep track of those up in the, uh, up in the query string for us. Make sure I'm typing everything right. Sort by direction. Oh. Okay, so that's cool. And then also when this is pasted into a different browser, we want to repopulate our component variables. So we need to do that in the mount. So copy those.
All right, so I'll save that and go over and refresh. Try this again. Let's kind of start over and we'll do descending first name, search, start a search. And then notice we have a sort by up in the query string. We have a direction up in the query string and then our search parameter. And if I copy that and paste that into a different browser tab, notice it all gets preserved. It's in reverse order and the search parameter is still there with the search results. That's tight. Um, cool. Well, that pretty much concludes our interaction and digging into Livewire. And in this lecture, we, we were able to inspect our Ajax request in the browser uh, inspector, the network inspector. We were able to get a listing of friends, searching of friends and sorting of friends. And keep in mind, we're interacting with the page without doing any page ref refresh. It's all doing these Ajax calls behind the scenes and updating the content of the page for us in dynamic fashion. So really, really cool. Um, so that'll, that'll do it for now. Uh, have a good day. Bye.